Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. If you don't know who I am, my name is Josie aka Sir Plantalot and today we will be talking about the false spider mites. So you either have heard about these mites, you have had them yourself, or you've never heard of these mites before because nobody really speaks about them that much. Like there's only like one or two videos on YouTube now about false spider mites and one of them was published recently by Betsy Begonia. What are false spider mites? Why am I talking about them? Well, the other day I was checking on my Hoyas and I had previously had false spider mites. I thought I had gotten rid of them, but I checked on the Hoyas again and I saw a little something in there and I was like, you know what? this would be a perfect opportunity to make a video about it. So I'm just gonna talk about like my experiences, what the false spider mite damage has looked on my plant, how I have treated it, etc. I feel like there's not really a lot of official information on them out there because they're not, well they're not new, but people are only starting to kind of know about them and learn about them. That being said, I don't even know the Latin name for the specific type of false spider mite that I have. I know it probably belongs in the family Tilepidudududu. <laughs> Nailed it. But that's pretty much it because like I said, not really much information on them out there. Anyway, so I'm gonna talk about the signs that you might have them. I'm gonna show you what my Hoyas look like that have had them. I'm gonna show you what they actually look like with this bad boy and i'm also gonna tell you how i have attempted to get rid of them in other ways that you might potentially try to get rid of them so let's jump right in i guess so i'm gonna start by telling you how i figured out that i had full spider mites once upon a time <laughs> i was doing the collab with adam not dude recently uh this was in the video that we filmed on his channel it was the ahoy doctor video again link up here in the description box below and i showed him this hoya and i asked him like this hoya is always growing in vine but the leaves never actually catch on they always end up falling off and he was like well you might probably have mites and i was like <laughs> no way. <laughs> I didn't really think much about it because I was like, you know what, Adam's all the way over there in Arizona with his false spider mites. Like, there's no way, there's no way I could have them here. Back then I was still in the UK, but there's no way. So again, I was in deep, deep, deep denial. And then Betsy Begonia came out with her video. She talks about three different types of mites she talks about the regular spider mites that you can actually see she talks about the mites we are talking about today and she is also talking about microscopic teeny tiny white mites but we're just gonna focus on the second one here on the false red mites definitely go check out her video if you want to learn um about the other two types of mites i'm gonna also borrow a lot of information from that video so thank you betty <laughs> and she was like get this microscope you're gonna be able to see things with this microscope and i was like you know what at some point sooner or later i'm probably gonna want to look at pests under a microscope anyway because i don't know I find that kind of stuff fun, okay? <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'm gonna invest in the uh, USB microscope. It's making a weird sound on the floor. So I purchased the microscope and I was like, okay, I'm gonna take a look at all of my plants under the microscope because you know, that's a natural reaction, isn't it? So I took a look at my Hoya Cowding and I found something. I found something crawling in there. I found something orange. And I was like, <laughs> I sent the footage to Adam and I was like, look what I found on my Hoya. Is that false spider mines? And he was like, yeah. So that's how I learned that I had false spider mines on my Hoyas. So that was a long ass story that no one actually asked for, but you got it anyway. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> anyway, so how are these mites different from the regular spider mite? Well, first and foremost, you cannot 
see them. You literally cannot see them with your naked eye. You need a microscope. Betsy also mentioned that you might be able to uh, see them with a macro lens on your phone. So we're gonna try that out later and I'm gonna see if I can see them with a macro lens. Ultimately, if you don't have a microscope, you will not be able to know whether or not you have them. Another difference is that because they're different from the regular spider mites, the usual treatments don't really work on them. So like a regular pesticide that is effective for spider mites does not work on these bad boys, like literally bad boys, they are very bad. <laughs> and also the spider mite predators aren't that effective for them. I mean, I don't know. This is personal experience because I had uh, spider mite predators on my plants at the same time that I had this Hoya Cao Deng and they didn't get rid of them. I'm gonna put here on the screen which type of spider mite predator that was exactly because Betsy mentioned another one and she said that that one worked. But anyway, anyway, we'll talk about that later. But this is the one that didn't work on the false spider mites basically. Another difference between the regular spider mite and the false spider mite is that the false spider mite predominantly attacks hoyas and orchids. They might attack different types of plants but I have mostly only really heard people talking about them in relation to hoyas and orchids whereas the regular spider mites they attack pretty much anything and everything. They don't care. They're not picky. Hi! So I also forgot to uh, mention one other very important difference between these two and that is that the false spider mites do not produce webbing like the regular spider mites do. So if you find webs on your plants, then if it's not a spider, <laughs> then it's probably spider mites. It's not gonna be false spider mites because like I said, they do not produce webbing and uh, instead they just find other ways of burying and hiding their eggs that I'm also gonna mention later on in the video. Okay, let's get back to it. So, what are some signs that you might have these false spider mites, also known as flat mites? So the first sign is that your Hoyas might not be growing. That is, you've had it for a long time and there has been no growth point, literally nothing has happened. This is because the false spider mites, when they munch on the plant, they inject their saliva into it and the saliva that they inject into the plant actually makes the plant unable to produce new growth. Sometimes the plant can kind of overcome it uh, or maybe it can overcome it just because there aren't enough false spider mites, I'm not really sure about this, but sometimes the plant can actually get to the next stage which is where it actually does produce a growth point but the growth point eventually dries up. This again has happened to me on a lot of my Hoyas. I'm gonna insert footage over here and this is what Betsy talks about is nubby growth. So it's basically a lot of dried up growth points in one place. Lastly like what happened with my Hoya Kao Deng, um, the last possibility is that the Hoya actually does produce a growth point and and it does start producing leaves but they eventually fall off again because of the poison injected into the plant. So I think now it's time to have a look at them, shall we? <laughs> Hello, I am on the floor. <laughs> So uh, let me connect this bad boy up. I also wanted to say, if you're thinking about buying one and you have a little bit more money to splurge on one of these, I would recommend you get a wireless one just because uh, with the cable and everything, it's really hard to manipulate it. Also because uh, this way I need to connect it to my computer and I have to record it on my computer and then send it to my phone. If it was a wireless one, I could obviously just send it directly to my phone. So uh, this is kind of what it looks like when you connect it. Uh, it has a little light that you can control with this bad boy. And then this is the focus button. So this is kind of what you move to focus on what you want to see. So we're first gonna have a look at the Hoya Kaudang. This is the one I talked about. This is the one that had the false spider mites first, I think, anyway. When you're looking for the mites, uh, the another difference actually that I forgot to mention between these and the regular spider mites is that these mites don't actually really live on the leaves. Their preferred uh, habitat, you could say, is on the stems and that is usually, from my experience anyway, uh, close to the new growth. Another thing is that they usually like to be 
the on the undersides of the stems kind of as if they didn't like the light and they were hiding from it that's kind of i don't know that's how i explain it anyway but they definitely do seem to prefer being on the undersides of the stems around the new growth so actually let me try to turn the camera so that you can see what i'm doing here <laughs> yeah well it's not an amazing angle but i'm gonna tell you when i can see something i guess so there's occasionally like these brownish spots which i think are the false spider mite corpses <laughs> is this moving or is it not moving looks like it isn't moving but there is something do you see that the orange thing i'm gonna try to circle it there's something orange there that i think might be a larva so let me have a look on the top side of the stem now ah found one okay there's two of them i'm gonna circle them here as you can see they have kind of orangey brownish color i think this one might be dead because usually you can see them crawling and this one is just chilling so i so i think it might be dead oh no i i just saw it move it's not dead oh my god so yeah perfect here you go this is what the full spider mite looks like let me have a look at the other one i was talking to adam and he said that they look brown when they're dead so i think this one might be dead but there is a egg or a larva over here oh this one is this one is moving moving oh my god look at him Okay, so we definitely still have mites, that's for sure. Oh, I hate you. Okay, so this one's definitely getting treated because it definitely has mites. Okay, let me quickly go grab my macro lens and I'm gonna try to see if we can see them with the macro lens on because I don't even remember where they were anymore. Let me have a look again. <laughs> so right after the nubbin. Okay, let me go grab the macro lens. This is what the macro lens looks like. So it's literally just the clip on that you put on your camera. I've got three, so I'm gonna have to figure out which one. <laughs> This one's gonna go on. I think it's the bottom one. So I think I've figured out how to use the macro lens. So it needs to be on the right <laughs> camera. So let's have a look with the macro lens. Yeah, so you can see that the difference in magnification is definitely notable. And I cannot see any signs of pests here. Like it doesn't look like there's anything crawling. I don't see anything. Granted, the light is really bad, but... <laughs> Actually, let me try to shine a light with this one. Yeah, that may work. Yeah, like I said, I just don't see anything with the macro lens. So the fact that it's impossible to see with the macro lens should tell you how impossible it is to see anything with your naked eye, because obviously that's, you know, the resolution is a lot different. <laughs> I'm gonna check out some other ones, insert some more footage if I find anything interesting, and then we're gonna move on to the treatment part. So I've taken a look at most of my suspicious Hoyas and I found mites, uh, either live mites or babies of mites on four of them. So these four Hoyas have one thing in common and that is that their stems are very woody, as in the stems aren't very fresh and they have a lot of woody looking older stems. And I feel like the mites kind of prefer that. They prefer to bury, especially bury their eggs in the 
crevices and the cracks in the woody parts of the stem. So if you don't see any on the green parts of your stems, then I would definitely check out where the woody part means the green part of the stem, because that's where I found a lot of mine. As you can see, this is where the green part meets the woody part, and this is exactly where I found them, in this area right here. Again, same case, a very woody, woody stem, and obviously this one is super woody, so I am not happy that we have some that are alive, but that's okay because we can treat them and at least I get to show you how to treat them. Well, I'm gonna show you one way how to treat them. So let's talk about treatment in general, first and foremost. So when I spoke about these mites with Adam, he said that the first method he tried was mixing rubbing alcohol and I think water or soap or something. But uh, he said that that was a lot of work. He had to spray the plants every couple of days and they just kept coming back. And also he said that he was going kind of funny from all the fumes. <laughs> The second treatment that he said he used that was actually effective was using a sulfur fungicide. I thought it was pronounced fungicide for the longest time, but it's actually fungicide and it sounds so weird to me. But anyway, sulfur fungicide, which quote, Adam said, smell like rotten egg farts. <laughs> I talk about him as if we're besties. I mean, in my head we are, but I'm not sure if the feeling's mutual. Anyway, <laughs> but he said that the sulfur fungicide definitely helped eradicate the population of the mites. I don't use the sulfur fungicide because he used the bonide one and you can't get bonide here in Europe in general. And I don't know, I just don't really wanna invest in another product for pests, to be honest with you. There is another option to get rid of them, which is by using beneficial insects. Now, like I said, personally, beneficial insects didn't really work for me on these mites, but Betsy Begonia said that uh, she used the Emblisius color Fornicus and the dose did eradicate the mites. So take from that what you will. The treatment that I do use and that I'm gonna use again today and I'm gonna show you how to perform it, administer, that's the word I was looking for, administer the treatment, is a warm bath. Again, I got this idea from Betty Begonia, which is how I learned about this method of getting rid of mites for the first time. I never even knew it was an option previously. I don't know where she got the information on it, but she said that if you submerge your Hoyas for 10 to 15 minutes in warm water of 43 to 49 degrees celsius or 110 to 120 degrees fahrenheit that that should kill the mites i have tried this method before and it did seem to work but they're back so i don't i don't i don't know that's the method that i'm gonna use today and i'm gonna show you how i do it i'm not necessarily sure that's how you're supposed to do it betsy suggested using a sous vide cooker but i'd never even heard of that before in my life and they're quite expensive so i was like i'm not paying 150 something pounds for a sous vide cooker yeah i don't know feels like an adult purchase that i'm not willing to make <laughs> so uh let me grab my hoyas i'm gonna move downstairs to the kitchen and tell you more about it. Welcome to my kitchen. <laughs> this is what I'm gonna be using to put the water into and what I'm gonna later put the Hoyas into. It's like a really big pasta pot. Before I lived here back in Prague, I didn't used to have a big pot, so I just used a large bowl that I just filled up with water and um, didn't mean to do that. <laughs> So how I used to do it before was that I would boil an entire kettle of water. This is what a kettle is to my fellow Americans. <laughs> I say fellow Americans, I've got nothing to do with Americans. And then I would use my, hang on a minute. I would use my uh, trusty gastro thermometer. It's important that you get a gastro one because this one uh, can measure up until 300 degrees Celsius, I believe. Basically you need to have one that can handle like high temperatures. So this one's usually used for like meat and frying and stuff, but I use it for Hoyas. So what I would do is I would fill up the bowl with the boiling water and I would eventually add uh, cold water and have the uh, thermometer in there until it would reach 49 degrees Celsius. Once it reached 49 degrees Celsius, I would just uh, put the Hoya in and leave it there for 15 minutes. I tried doing it with, at 43 degrees Celsius previously, but that didn't do 
anything to the mites. This time around, I'm gonna fill up the pot with water, bring it to boil, or I don't know, just turn the stove on and monitor the temperature that way and turn the stove off once it reaches 49 degrees. So let's do that. So while that is, uh, yeah, warming up, I guess. <laughs> I'm gonna talk to you about the mediums that you have your Hoyas in. So all of my Hoyas that um, are affected are in pawn, which is good for boiling them or giving them a warm bath because that means you don't have to take the plant out of the pot. You can just literally keep it in the substrate, put it into the water and then take it out again. If you have your Hoyas in soil, it well, might be better. You need to uproot them and just boil the plant itself. I've never tried boiling soil, but <laughs> it seems like it would be really messy, so I do not recommend. Um, some of the uh, minerals from pond tend to float, so what I usually like to do is I like to take a cellophane wrap and wrap the base of the plant so that they don't float out. So I'm gonna do that now while the water is getting ready. Actually, you know what? I have a bunch of Ziploc bags, so I might just use those. Is that a good idea? I don't know. Yeah, why not? Another thing I should probably mention, as you can see, this uh, Hoya has a beautiful two new leaves on the way, and as does this one, the Hoya Carii. It's possible that because of the warm bath, they're gonna die, but sacrifices must be made, y'all. So if they end up dying, it's normal. Last time I gave a warm bath to this one, the new leaves ended up dying. But yeah, it is what it is, unfortunately. You just gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, I mean, it's not perfect, but I think this is good enough. <laughs> okay, 49.3. I can live with that. <laughs> so yeah, let's just dunk this bad bitch. Okay, let me get a youth pencil or something. <laughs> Die, bitch. She is fully submerged. Now she's fully submerged. Oh, oh come on. <laughs> Don't embarrass me like this. So I'm just gonna set the timer to 15 minutes and then come fish her out. So that's pretty much the warm bath method, how I do it anyway. So I'm just gonna repeat that with all of these infested bitches. And no, I love them, I do but they're annoying me. And yeah, then I'm gonna have a look at the situation after I've given them a bath. And if I notice that there are still some mites alive, I'm gonna dunk them again. <laughs> so I have finished, I'm gonna squat down because my tripod isn't tall enough. <laughs> I just finished giving a bath to my Hoyas. This was the last one. Um, I'm gonna show you, do you see the white stuff on the new leaves? <laughs> I think that happened during the warm bath. I don't think that was there before, so this is what I mean. Like, they might get damaged, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Anyway, I checked on them. I didn't see any live adults. I did see some babies, but there's not really a way to know whether or not they're alive. So I'm just gonna check the plants every couple of days with the microscope and if I do see some, I might either give them a bath and once I get bored of that, <laughs> I'm gonna try either Beneficials or the Sulfur Frenchicide. So yeah. Okay guys, so that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you learned something new about false spider mites. Let me know if you'd heard about them before and if you had, if you have any additional advice or any interesting tidbit on f information or anything feel free to put it down in the comments below because I would like to learn more and I'm sure other people watching this video would love to learn more as well. If you did enjoy this video, show it some love by giving it a like, commenting down below, subscribing to my channel or hitting the notification bell if you wanna be notified every time I post a new video. Also feel free to follow me on Instagram at SirPlantsalot. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you here for my next one. Bye.